Hello, I'm Dr. Annadale, and I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's University and Seminary in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Our text for today is Book 5 of Boethius' Consolation of Philosophy. In this book, Boethius addresses the problem of divine foreknowledge and human free will. This is an apparent paradox. Uh, the problem can be stated briefly in this way. How can I be free if God knows in advance what I will choose? Or, to put it differently, if my choices are truly free, how can God know what I will choose before I do? It seems either that I'm not free or that God doesn't have complete foreknowledge of what I'm going to choose. Uh, a couple of things to look for as you're reading the text. Early on in this book, there is a distinction made between two different kinds of chance, two different meanings of the word chance. If chance means an event that is totally without any cause whatever, Lady Philosophy says, then chance is nothing. It's nothing whatever. There is no such thing as a, an event with no cause at all. Now, if on the other hand we mean by chance an unexpected result, an event that turns out differently from what we expected, given our current state of knowledge, our current uh, context, then all we're dealing with is a case of unknown causes. But these unknown causes exist, and they are causes, and they can be woven into the network of divine providence just as easily as any other known causes. In section four, Lady Philosophy makes an important claim about a mistake that people make about their knowledge. She says, people assume that the limit of their knowledge depends upon the capacity to be known of the objects of knowledge, but this is wrong. Things are known, things that are known are not comprehended according to how knowable they are by nature, but rather according to the ability to know of those who are doing the knowing. So in other words, the limits of my knowledge are set by the limits of my mind, not by the limits of the intelligibility of the object itself. So when I reach a limited limitation in my knowledge, I should recognize that this, more, more likely than not, owes something to the limits of my mind and not to any limit in the object itself. This will be important when we make the transition from talking about human knowledge to divine knowledge in just a minute. Now in section six, we get uh, Lady Philosophy's solution to the problem of divine foreknowledge and human free will. And the solution in a nutshell is this. God exists in eternity and experiences every moment of time simultaneously. Therefore, there is no before and after for God. Therefore, his knowledge of my choices is not foreknowledge. Here's, here's the quote. Since God has an eternal and omnipresent nature, his knowledge surpasses time's movements and is made in the simplicity of a continual present, which embraces all the vistas of the future and the past. And, and he considers all this in the act of knowing, as though all things were going on at once. This means that what you think of as his foreknowledge is really a knowledge of the instant, which is never passing and never coming to be. From this high vantage point, he sees at once all things that were and are and are to come. And one way to think of this is to think of God not as being bound by time the way I am. He does not have to turn the pages of the book of my life to see what's going to happen. He doesn't read ahead in my life. He is able to look at every page of the book simultaneously without even opening the cover as it were. He can look right down through and every page is transparent. He experiences his knowledge of every moment of my life simultaneously. So he doesn't know on Monday what I'm going to choose on Tuesday. He knows my Monday and my Tuesday simultaneously. So a parting question, is this a plausible solution to the problem of divine foreknowledge and human free will? Is it one that you feel inclined to accept uh, intellectually, or does it involve us in uh, accepting claims that are even more dubious than the den denial of human freedom, uh, which the problem itself implicates? That's my commentary for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.